Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jun Young, and today I'll be uh, presenting uh, our work titled Don't Be Dense, Efficient Keyword Peer for Sparse Databases. And this is joint work with Server Patel and Kevin Yeo. So agenda for the talk, uh, we'll have the talk will be roughly divided into uh, four parts. Uh, the first part we'll go over uh, briefly on what uh, private information retrieval uh, scheme is. And the second part, uh, we'll go over, uh, over some prior index peer schemes uh, using uh, homomorphic encryptions. And in the third part, we'll present our main construction called uh, sparse keyword peer. And we'll go over some uh, experimental uh, evaluations. And in our work, we'll only consider a single server peer setting. So what, what is peer? So Let's first go over what uh, index peer is. Um, in index peer problem, we, it, we, we consider uh, two parties, a uh, client and the server, and the, the server um, contains uh, n database entries that the client wants to retrieve. And each database entry is associated with an index from one to n. And for the client wants to query for uh, index i, it sends some encryption of the index i to the server, which the server processes in some way. Um, to return the associated value. And during this process, uh, the server should not learn what the client has queried. Um, and uh, keyword peer is a uh, more generalized uh, um, notion of an index peer, where instead of each value being associated with an index from one to n, um, it's being associated with some keyword uh, from some potentially large universe k. And again, it's basically, other, other than that, it's basically the same as the index peer, where the client, if it wants to query for a keyword ki, it sends some uh, encryptions of the keyword ki to the server, which the server will process in some way to return the associated value. And the private, uh, the security requirement is basically the same in this setting as well. So there are several uh, ways to reduce, uh, key, uh, reduce the keyword peer to index peer, and one, Naive approach is to use uh, linear uh, size client mapping, but obviously uh, that's not efficient. So there are some better frameworks that were proposed previously, which include uh, using a simple hashing uh, scheme and the more state-of-the-art uh, uh, ha more state-of-the-art keyword peer framework is the uh, cuckoo hashing uh, peer framework. Um, we will not go over what exactly these are, but um, one problem with the, these uh, prior keyword peer frameworks is that compared to the index peer uh, counterpart, um, the response size blows up by at least a factor of uh, 2x. So, so the question is, uh, can we do better? And the goal essentially is to uh, construct the keyword peer scheme with uh, no response blow up compared to the index peer uh, counterpart. And so here uh, we present our uh, main con contributions called uh, sparse peer. And it's a novel keyword peer framework that has no response size blow up at the cost of a slightly uh, increased computation. And it's a general enough framework that will work with all state of the art index peer schemes such as Onion and Spiral. And schemes that basically utilize a homework encryptions. Um, so we'll go over some prior index peer uh, schemes uh, using homework encryptions in this part. And again, uh, same as a uh, peer, uh, this is basically a peer where uh, the client, we have two parties, the client and the server, and the server holds uh, n database entries. And suppose that the client wanted to query for an index i, so it wants to retrieve vi in this example. Then the client uh, constructs uh, encryptions of length n, where every, every element in the vector encrypts to zero except for the ith index that it wants to query for. And then the client sends this uh, query vector to the server. And then the server essentially just performs the dot product using homomorphic operations. And it's easy to see that the correctness holds in this case. Um, but the problem with this is that this incurs a linear size upload from client, and obviously this becomes a quickly unscalable for a sufficiently large databases. So to improve upon this, uh, we can use a concept called a recursion, and the idea is to model the database as a multi-dimensional um, hypercube. In this case, this is an example of a two-dimensional um, database. And suppose that if the client wanted to query for, uh, let's say, the element vi, then it will construct 
query vector for each dimension, and then basically uh, select um, the corresponding uh, row and column to retrieve VI. And this is obvious improvement over the naive one because it incurs a D, O D times N to the power of a one over D um, upload from client for where D is the number of dimensions. So that's for the preliminaries and then we'll go present our uh, main construction uh, called a sparse keyword pair. And the basic idea is to essentially transform the original database into an encoding that allows response efficient keyword pair. And to do this, we'll encode the database as a linear combinations. So more formally, um, at the server side of phase, um, suppose that again, we're given uh, the, key, the pair of uh, keys and values that, the data, as, that correspond to database entries. And suppose that we have a hash function that maps to the key K to some binary vector of length M, where M is some parameter that will be clear in the moment. And this hash function will be uh, shared with the client as well. And the server solves the following um, linear system at the setup, where the left-hand side matrix is constructed by hashing the, uh, each keyword K to some binary vector of length M, and the right-hand side corresponds to the original database entries. And essentially, the solution vector that you get from solving this linear system will be the um, encoded peer database. And how, what happens during the query phase? Again, let's say the server uh, now contains the encoded database E1 through EM, and suppose that the uh, client wanted to query for the keyword KI. Then it basically constructs length M uh, query vector. Uh, let's say H of KI corresponds to this uh, query vector, and it encrypts using the homomorphic encryption schemes, and sends this length M vector to the uh, server, which the server will just perform the dot product and return to the client. And the correctness is actually pretty easy to see because recall that um, H of KI dot product of the encoding E is equal to uh, VI by construction, which implies that the client will retrieve the correct response. Um, in this case, yeah. Um, the blue corresponds to the entries that the client will retrieve. So what is good about this? Uh, well, it has, if M is uh, similar to N, then it has basically the similar database size and computation as the index peer. And more importantly, this actually has no response size blow up unlike uh, previous uh, prior uh, keyword peer frameworks. Well, obviously there's something bad about this and the first problem is that the uh, left-hand side matrix that was used to construct the encoding is very dense if we assume that the, uh, the hash function is basically uniform and and solving the linear system then is essentially cubic, which implies that the server setup is very uh, expensive. And another problem with this is that this incurs a linear size upload from the client, uh, which is something that we want, also want to avoid. So to, to solve this, we will present a partition-based uh, sparse pier. And the idea basically is to partition the database into disjoint parts to allow recursion to uh, be supported. And the main, the main reason why the previous scheme was uh, not efficient was because we couldn't essentially use recursion. And recall that in the, originally we basically attempted to solve this uh, system of linear equations. But now we will actually modify this and essentially um, uh, partition the matrix into uh, disjoint parts so that each key ki only belongs to one of the one of the partition parts uniformly at random. So in this case, this is an example of a, a matrix where we actually divide into three parts, and each key k is assigned to one of them at uniformly at random. And assume that we're actually going to be uh, considering a two-dimensional database as well, but yeah, that will be shown later. And basically um, here uh, we have H of uh, K4 is basically assigned to the um, third part in the matrix and H of K6 assigned to the second part of the matrix and so on. And basically we obviously see that the, each part, the, each of the parts in the matrix 
uh, corresponds to the contiguous segment in the encoded uh, vector, as in, the, in this uh, picture shows. And the, and the same as before, we basically solved this linear system to obtain the encoded query vector. And suppose that we actually consider the, uh, uh, the row, the first row, H of K1, which actually corresponds to uh, E1, E2, and E3, and which basically corresponds to the, um, the first value. And why this is nice is that now we can actually use uh, recursion. Um, so Essentially, now the first uh, dimension, we actually use the h of k, h, the function h, to produce some random vector that only embeds to the first dimension. And the remaining dimensions can be used to select that partition from the uh, matrix, in a sense. Yeah, so in a summary, yeah, so this is basically what I said before. The first dimension is used to embed the random vector um, that was, that's produced using the function h, and remaining dimensions will be used to select the partition where this uh, k, key k belongs to. And then you can see that this is actually identical to index peer, and it can be extended to multiple dimensions quite um, easily. So this actually solves the uh, second problem, where it incurs a linear size client upload because we can now use recursion. So this actually, in some sense, solves the first problem as well as Essentially, what this um, partitioning does is that it basically uh, partitions the linear system into smaller um, sub-linear systems that are actually independent. So we can actually solve um, each uh, smaller linear system separately, which makes the entire encoding algorithm much faster. So in this case, we see the first part uh, belongs to the first, I guess, part in the encoded vector, which corresponds to v1 and v3, and then we can actually solve this linear system separately. And this actually corresponds to all remaining parts as well. Uh, so that's basically it for the main constructions. Um, and we actually have more improvements in the full paper, so please refer to that. And as a, quickly, we'll go over some experimental evaluation. The, and then this might be a bit hard to parse, but the Basic takeaway here is that if we actually plug in our keyword peer scheme to uh, Onion or Spiral, the state-of-the-art index peer schemes, we essentially get a keyword peer framework that, is, um, that has half the response size of the crashing-based framework while only incurring a slightly increased uh, computational overhead. Uh, conclusion, we presented our sparse peer, uh, keyword peer framework, and this basically worked with most peer protocols, and experimental evaluation shows that our uh, framework is practical. Thank you.